Hello, um, my name is AK Chamis. With me today is Zach from FedEx, Vinu from uh, uh, Splunk, and also Hutch from my team uh, from Splunk as well. And I'm going to let him introduce himself really quick, and we will begin shortly. Hello, my name is Zach Taylor. I'm working at FedEx, and I've had the opportunity to implement chargeback within our platform, uh, ultimately allowing us to visualize things at a higher degree to allow for optimization for increased capacity among our platform. Hi, folks. I'm Benu. I lead product strategy for Splunk platform. Um, a lot of my time is spent figuring out how our solutions help customers solve their problems. And a big one has been how to help them move to workload pricing and when they do, how to master it. So I'm very excited to do this. And uh, my name is Chris Hutchinson, but I go by Hutch. I'm a longtime Splunker, an enthusiast, um, and I've been uh, working with AK on the platform tools engineering team uh, around chargeback. So glad to be here. This is going to be the first video of what we promised you to, you would have the three bonus videos. So the first one is going to be a walkthrough and end-to-end uh, demo of the app, the features, functionality, and how it works. And the second video, which would be a separate video, will be around building your business hierarchy. And the third one would be optimizing your stack, making sure it's healthy, looking for, you know, uh, SVC hoggers, looking for ways to figure out, you know, make room for other important business um, uh, opportunities that you can run on your Splunk Cloud or Splunk Enterprise instance. Now, also this the demonstration today, um, we're going to be showing you an internal system that we use for demonstration purposes. So with that, um, you know, we um, let me tell you just a little bit about the demo. So we're going to look today at this organization. We call it a T-shirt company. It's like a fictitious made up company. Everything you're going to see here is made up. Uh, all the pricing that you will see, ingestion is all fake. It's all like for demo purposes. So, um, and this organization has five business units. They have uh, global information security, global IT operations, marketing, support, and sales, right? This is where we are here in the executive dashboard, all right? And then we're seeing information such as, you know, how much SVCs they used uh, yesterday. This is, this is yesterday, and you can see that here on the right side hand. Uh, it tells you what they were looking at. We can pick different days if we wanted to from, from this panel here. And it gives you information about, you know, ingestion, how much ingestion they did all together as a team. Um, this is more like their storage usage, just searchable storage that they have uh, for Inspunk Cloud. And this would be uh, the archive storage they have. A little bit of information about the business, the owner, maybe an email address so we know we know quickly who um, who is responsible for uh, for this usage. So, if you guys were with us at Count, we talked about building your business hierarchy. This is going to be in video two, where we're going to show you how we built this wonderful environment. We're going to go walk through that. This is showing you now a demo of it being built after the fact. Okay, this is what you would have when you go back to the office and uh, watch these videos and implement it or. Uh, use ODS um, to help you implement the app. Now, down here below is the entire organization, how much they consumed, uh, the, the ingestions for the entire organization, 200 gig, all of their storage so far, all of their archive storage so far. If I wanted to say, I want to learn more about information security, I want to understand where the 67 SVC spent, where this ingestion came from, and then wh who is responsible ultimately for this 1.4 terabytes of storage. By the way, if you don't like gigabyte, you can change that uh, in here. There's a unit of measurement. There's several settings that would change what you see in the dashboard. They're kind of hidden, but you can customize it to your own uh, specification. So if I if uh, we clicked on information security, now we're seeing that security engineering architecture, they use 43 out of the, uh, out of the 67, right? And this is how much ingestion they had. They had less ingestion than uh, threat defense and response who use less SVCs, but they, they ingested more data. So that means these guys probably heavy on the search. They, they don't ingest so much, but these guys do need uh, more data, but maybe searching it less, right? Same exact thing, like I explained above, it would be more how much together their stories are responsible for, et cetera. 
If you don't see anything here, that means they didn't have anything going on yesterday. They didn't use the system, they didn't search anything, but obviously ingestion doesn't stop, right? It's around the clock, it never stops. So although they maybe were on PTO or something, which is weird, why would incident response not be busy? This is because it's a demo environment. So it's gonna, we're gonna have problems like that. But that, that means they didn't have any usage, et cetera, et cetera. Now from here, I'm gonna go, and we kind of come back to this quickly, and we're gonna consolidate and make this app much better. We have a team working with us that would uh, make this more easier, easier to use and you know, kind of user-friendly. So we're gonna be going into a couple of different dashboards and we, you might find this confusing, but we're gonna explain um, uh, the reason behind that. This is more like giving me a high level overview of where I stand, okay? So, but if I wanted to see my search usage for that same business unit, global information security, over the last seven days, here's my SVC usage in the last seven days. And what's cool ab about this view I, you see here SVC entitlement. So in the second video, we will talk, we will explain how we set this up, right? Uh, so obviously they've been exceeding what we thought they need for, for, for Enspoint Cloud, right? So uh, theoretically we set them up at 55 SVCs, but they're actually using about 25 more uh, than what we thought they would be using. And this is, this is very important when we get to charge back, right? So these things are the reason behind this. So we can we can monitor and keep keep an eye on on these different business units and how much they're how much spawn cloud they're consuming. And the fact is, they there's the adoption of spawn cloud as you guys know. You know they may have a situation where they onboard new data. They'll they'll add more users to the platform. And we didn't have no idea as a Splunk admin lead team. I'm talking from that perspective. We didn't have any idea that's going to happen. But this is this is to show you quickly here where this is coming from. Obviously, security engineering and architecture, which we saw in the table, is responsible for most of that usage. And if we look at more data, like 30 days, we could have come came back here and said, I want to look at 30 days of historical data or 90 days. Kind of nice to have that view if you wanted to, right? This is just by default when you launch the dashboard, it looks like seven days. Now notice all dashboard has this feature. You know, you're done with the panel. You can close it so it's out of your face. Now I want to look at ingestion. Okay, same thing. It's going to break it down by department, but you can also break it down by source type. Okay, or by index if you wanted to for the entire business unit. So you can you can group them differently. Um, and we can see you know, the various different business units. We also have, this doesn't make sense for an SVC customer. They are not on an SVC license because this demo environment supports both volume-based and SVC customers. So if you're an SVC customer, you won't see this. This will be zero because we don't charge you for ingesting data. It's all based on, on uh, SVCs or what we call workload pricing. So in other words, if they were, on ingestion, we had a we had a quota set for them at 110 gigabytes. Obviously, there if you're a volume based customer in cloud, you would also be able to see that, and uh, that would help you understand uh, where to stand, right? And also, which department is responsible for most of that ingestion. Now, the same thing for storage. I'm not going to uh, go over that again. It's really same thing uh, with with their quota. Uh, I like to call that allocation because it's a soft allocation, we can't actually stop them from storing to more than 2000, right? This is more for your knowledge, for your um, information, more like this is what we think you need. They're using more or less or staying within that, within that range. Similar thing for our cafe. Now I'm gonna go back to the department uh, uh, panel here. Notice if it's clickable, right? If I click on it, it will take me to the showback dashboard. I have it pre-opened here. Now this, I know it's going to be confusing. Why do you have executive and showback? Uh, main difference is show executive has everything kind of easy to use. Maybe give it to your managers. You know, the, easy to use. They can start there. They'll be able to see storage. They'll be able to see ingestion. They'll be able to see SVCs. They don't need more than that. Now for you guys, uh, it would probably be beneficial to to drill down to the user level. Wouldn't that be nice to see what, what's going on? 
where is this usage coming from from a user level? So again, we're going to go through the same exact thing. We're going to click through that. And then if I want to see what security and engineering are doing, I can see all their users. Now, this is a portion of what the Splunk system user used benefiting this department within this business unit. And if I click on it, for example, I'll see the workload for, for that user. Obviously, the other model accelerations are probably the most expensive SVCs that we have in Splunk Cloud or any Splunk implementation. Uh, we can look at Emma and see her jobs, et cetera, et cetera. Now, what you have here, uh, I kind of like to come in here and say, well, let's look at different use cases. Let me see what search has they're using the most. Obviously, yes. Well, well, that's the security team, right? Uh, let me see um, what apps. Okay, same because data model acceleration, but they have used you know jobs and and correlation searches in various different apps. Or I can do I can like the one called provenances. So if you have dashboards going on for regular users, you would see that in provinces. Very nice to have that to watch for, uh, you know, to see what kind of dashboards are being used in the environment, et cetera. Even the search string itself or the search ranges, you know, what kind of searches we're writing, are, we, are they dense, are they sparse, are they rare, are they leading pipe searches, and the search string itself would be in here as well. Now, in here, there's a lot of information, okay? Um, and as you can see here, this usage here is determined using of the formula we we talked a little bit about that during conf right but this is there is a reason why this was this costly it ran 352 times every time it ran this is how much time it consumed on the platform runtime okay so there's something terribly wrong with this data model it needs to be tuned because it's running way over look at this data model it ran for 10 hours makes sense this guy went over right it's supposed this is supposed to be just one day so it's it's not not finishing on time, okay? And data models accelerate every five minutes. We're looking at worst case scenario, how much uh, their max time runtime, CP usage on average, you know, how much every time it used, which is a lot of CPU, 12% of all search hits is a lot of usage for that for that time period. It's kind of like a peak amount of for that for that amount of searches, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. How many uh, right events they scanned. Uh, how sparse it was, the buckets that it, it searched, how dense, what type of range it is, um, et cetera, et cetera. Even as, uh, basically um, like a, a sample of the search strings that uh, these uh, executed together. So each line item here represents all of the execution for this search head, for this type of search, for this provenance, it could be a dashboard, it could be um, uh, you know, a scheduled job or data model acceleration, report acceleration, and, and obviously by user, the user that actually uh, initiated these searches. Okay, and I'm just gonna scroll to the right and just show you the different options. In here, uh, throughout the, the, the app, we have info buttons that you can click on. Um, this tells you a little bit about performance, how to make searches better performant. Uh, it discusses, it tells you the difference between sparse and dense searches, et cetera. So you can, if you want to, you can learn a little more about searches and how they work. And lastly, this search string can be enormous inside. So we basically, this here, we just want to look at 180 characters by default. So if you see it, if you don't see the whole string, because you did, you need to do something more. You need probably switch that to a thousand, okay? And if we need to see a sample of more than three, because it's only sampling up to three here, you can we can sample ten, so you can see you can get an example of of what what these searches look like for that particular effort or job that ran on the platform. All right. So from here, you know. Really, just quick, going back to this quickly, executive dashboards, we start there, see what's going on, the state of the union. If we wanted to drill down to understand better, you know, what's users and their jobs and their workload, uh, what is that looks like? So we go to the showback dashboard. And now, if you remember, I had this view here, right? So we have a third dashboard. It's more like 
long term, like more like uh, I want to look at a week worth of data or a month's worth worth of data. While we were building these um, dashboards, we realized if we do that, it it doesn't perform really well. Okay, the future of this app, we're going to consolidate and make it easier to use, but that's probably one of the reasons that we separated them for performance reasons. Okay, but think of the reporting apps like a Swiss RB knife. Now you can come in here. The difference between this and the showback or the executive dashboard, the main difference, it sees everything, all business units together, all of them together, right? So if I come in here to the right, I see I see exactly the same exact percentage that we saw in the table over there. I can slice and dice any way I want. I can see which was, which user had the most amount of usage, et cetera, et cetera. All the different, uh, different uh, drill downs, including dashboards, you would see dashboards in here as well. And you'll be able to filter, right? Which is very important. This is going to be handy when we when we uh, when we do the third video around optimization. We're going to talk about how you can use this uh, the reports dashboard to find expensive um, SVC jobs or searches. So basic searches, you can use that to just drill down in different business units department if you wanted to. Um, you want to do some more advanced. You want to look used by user roles or by a certain dashboard that there that you want to go after, even a workload pool itself. Um, so, however, if you're here and you find, well, I just want to see global information security. I see 1,400 jobs. Let me just see these. Click on it. Now we're just seeing enterprise security on the right side hand. Anything you're doing now is going to be for just enterprise security. If you want to go back to see everything, you just click anywhere here and the instruction tells you what to do right below the table. Um, I also like this view, which is very important. So because search is what we saw there for the whole day, but let's see it hour by hour, right? Let's see how it was performing throughout the day. Um, so here's, here's an hourly by app, which you can, you can also split by different things here, user or the search type or the actual uh, the job, et cetera. Even the title of the user. Why do we have this business information, right? Maybe there's a data scientist going out and creating massive amount of searches that are very costly. We can identify him by his role if we have that business information. So it's very nice to have that additional context into the equation. Again, there's all graphs going to have advanced features. So if you want to see this in multi-series mode, if you want to see this, um, if you want to see data values, you turn them on or off. You can round uh, differently. You can say, if you want to enable trellis, kind of, you can use trellis. So each one of them is individually now. You know, different things that you can do uh, with the dashboard here without having to exit from it. And, you know, um, and, and basically, um, having to write your own dashboard. So it gives, gives you flex, more flexibility to do, um, it, to do additional changes to how you want to review or view the data to your own specifications. Now, AK, uh, it's such a powerful dashboard. Do you think it will be helpful for the audience to maybe just, if you can show them how we can click on specific users and then kind of double click into what usage they have, and that might be helpful for any anyone who's viewing this video and is trying to understand actually that, hey, we have a user who's using a lot of SVC and we're trying to unpack it. What's driving it? What, what are they doing wrong? Sounds good. Yeah, perfect. Let's pick on me. Hey, Thomas, we just go back to the filters, go to basic, pick your user from the list, or you can do use the business uh, information. So I, I support two different business units. So I have the job supporting these two. That's why you're seeing me everywhere here. Now I just look at myself and come back down here. I can do drill downs now hourly. Obviously, I was very busy doing something yesterday morning, uh, running stuff, right? So you can see I had a hot peak usage around uh, 9 and 10 a.m. in the morning. Uh, these are the apps that I use, or I can do um, maybe uh, by search types, mostly going to be ad hoc. Uh, um, in this lab environment. So yeah, that's my ad hoc. I do have some scheduled jobs apparently, yeah. 
So, so this user has scheduled jobs, has some ad hoc usage, and uh, these are sub searches that were initiated as well. And this is kind of, this line gives you the total amount for that hour. So this user for this hour you consumed about ten SOCs. Okay, so cool. Thank you. Yeah, that's that's a great idea. You can also that's why these filters exist, so we can we can do these things. Alrighty. So um, the last thing I want to show you in reports here is you remember we talked about that threshold or that allocation. Here I can see it for all business units at the same time. So they have 55 SVCs and we can see hour by hour how they're doing. These guys own 20, they're hardly doing anything. So they're under. These guys are close to 35, but not there yet in the 25, 30 range. Obviously these guys are not doing much either. They're below their entitlement that we set up in the app, which we would learn how to do that in the second video. All right, so, um, and then, and then, so now that I, we talked about, uh, you know, kind of mid range or mid term type of reporting, it's important to know that the app has a forecasting capability as well. So this can come handy when you start thinking about chargeback. Okay, so we're gonna switch gears now. We, everything we, we saw, uh, yet yeah, everything we saw so far was around showback usage who is using what and how much at the highest level of the business, broken down by department, users, their workload, et cetera. So, so in order to do chargeback, I kind of need to uh, do showback first, right? Need some historical data. And then I can use machine learning, right? Or AI to predict where this, you know, where they're going to be in the future, right? So they have up and downs. This is the historical, the known values. We know how much they used, right? Uh, this is just a holdback period for me to test the model. And this is the future predicted um, uh, usage for them. So and every business unit varies. They may have cycles. They may have situations that have release windows. They may have, uh, you know, jobs that works uh, that work every week or certain different, different traffic, different um, uh, behavior on a platform. And so we want to see that over time. It's important to see that for 30 or 60 or even better, 90 days, okay? So we can understand where or how this business unit all together, what their usage looks like from a past perspective and where they're going to be in the future, 60 days, 90 days, even a year from now. So we can predict that uh, that usage. Now in here, we discussed that in the, in the, in the talk, uh, you can you can change the dials here to your own specifications. Um, basically, you have you have this if you have you want to use special days or different periods. It's all explained in here, and we went over that all, uh, during our talk uh, that you attended at Conf. So uh, this is going to be uh, important for chargeback. If you don't use machine the machine learning app, we also have the same similar view using the predict command, which ships in every version of Spawn. Okay, and you can change the algorithm. There are four different algorithms in here that you can try. And also it has its own help because it's a little different than machine learning. It doesn't require machine learning, but it has uh, uh, slightly different features that are associated with it. Okay, so that's, that's all I wanna talk about the forecast. Then um, at this point, I still need to know about storage before I can go to chart back. Let's talk about storage, okay? So from a storage perspective, we have four tabs. We have ingestion. If you're a volume-based customer, it's gonna be very important, right? If you're SVC or workload customer, it's not as important, but it's very important to have that information. We wanna know how much ingestion is going on, right? Um, but you'd also, that this is, what you're paying for the amount of data you're storing, most likely. And if you own DDAA, you would have also information about how much data you're archiving into, into, um, into uh, the, the dynamic data active archive location set up in Splunk Cloud, right? But so they're gonna be like the same. You can, you can come in here, slice, you know, um, split by index, uh, if you wanna split by department, split by business unit, you have that options in here. Uh, you get the indexes. This looks at seven days. 
Uh, if you have an index that is shared across multiple business units, no problem. Okay. And we can basically, uh, you see here that this is shared. So uh, you would see the percent ownership less than 100% in this case. Ingestion at the source pack, ingestion at the department, ingestion at the business unit altogether. You see that. And even kind of an idea of that cost too. Again, this all this is fictitious. Customers own around 550 gigabytes, right? And they, uh, that's how much they spent for them. This is fake, right? So this is what their yearly average is going to look like, right? So give you an idea, right? This is their daily cost. This is the unit cost. So 10 cents a gigabyte, right? In this in this fake environment. Um, this is again, I kind of like this view because you can see it day after day. We can look at 30 days and see what's going on. In in the lab, it's very repetitive, so we don't have. It's all using um, robotic, synthetic uh, ingestions that we're doing in your environment. You will definitely see variations for sure. Um, and here, I may come and say I want to split by index or source type even to see what's going on. Similar thing, if we wanted to analyze a certain business unit, we have that up at the top. If we want to go after a particular index or even the source types. Uh, we can do that. And if you if you are tired of looking at gigabytes, you want to see everything in terabytes, you can do that as well from here. Um, so uh, moving on from here, so we have one last uh, thing we want to talk about before we go to charge back here. So just like in the show back uh, in the forecasting that I showed you, we have a couple of options we have here. We can see historical amount of this we're talking here about ingestion right historical amount of ingestion for that business unit that i selected which is global uh, it operations okay however um i want to go and and show you in dds because this is more important for a, a workload customer right so we're going to come down here and we're going to select a business unit let's select information security all right so the, and you own, this customer owns 5,500 gigabytes of storage. If you're, we sell it in units of 500 gig blocks, as you guys know, if you want to see that, you can just click yes. So this customer owns 11 units, right? So all together, all together, this business unit is under their allocation, which is about four, it's four uh, units or four times 500. They own about, two terabytes of storage right that's how we how we allocated uh, that's their allocation okay so we can see their historical usage right so we can we can definitely look at that even better do some forecasting to see where they're going to be in the future right so same exact concept using machine learning uh, to do that and basically um you you know same set the dials use the help change the dials, look at more data if you have it, adjust your future timestamp, and so on and so forth. So all this forecasting is helpful for the last step in the process. We want this to be the last thing that you do. Don't trouble yourself with chargeback day one. Start with showback, end with chargeback, okay? Because we need to understand and learn the environment first. And here, uh, when it's all said and done, uh, we have basically, it's a simple table. It's a business allocation for every business unit. It's called the, the B unit uh, uh, entitlement allocation table, all the five business units. How much of my entitlement they're responsible for? And this yeah, unit. Hey, can I interrupt real quick? Yeah, please. Go um, ahead. I just got a question about we, we just looked at showback, the concept of showback, and we're looking at chargeback. And for some folks who may have an idea in their head about what each of these components is, can you? Describe a little bit why a company, um, you know, the various use cases for showback versus chargeback, and maybe we could have uh, some commentary from the customer as well. That's an excellent question. And we actually covered it during the talk. So if you can go back to the on-demand uh, talk, we actually discussed that. But right. basically the difference is some customers, they may be asking for chargeback, but they really mean showback. They don't really want to, uh, start, you know, charging back their business. They just want to understand. They want to see what's going on. They want to understand that usage, justify it, uh, uh, have that visibility uh, for their managers and their manager managers uh, to have that in place, right? So 
usage, how much is being, how much all together we're using, and then how much each business units ultimately are using their departments and their users within within these within these departments. Now, chargeback is for organizations that you know I can't justify without you setting up on the side a budget, right? We can't we can't have that. We gotta have chargeback before I, I can allow you in the system. I need to understand exactly what you what the cost is going to be for you, Mr. Global IT Operations, before I even let you in a platform. We have these situations. Customers won't allow anyone on the platform unless there's accountability. That's where chargeback is important. So we can basically figure out, okay, this is going to be your cost. And this is here we can say, I want to see the entire year, which is usually go by year for Splunk Cloud. And that's going to be what we're looking at, right? We can pick a business unit. And this is going to be their yearly cost, right? Right there. All this information right here. So basically, uh, a way for you not to eat all of the costs. So usually it falls on the backs of uh, IT, the security team, and then and then we get in trouble. So chargeback is important for organizations that want to make sure uh, other business units participate in the cost of of uh, of your Spine Cloud um, environment. And, and does that play into the story? Of, you know, Splunk is a platform. Um, the same data can be used by various organizations. So it's a natural extension of the, the value of the platform is being allowed to have other groups have access to that valuable data. Um, but to your point, subsidize it so that the next time a budget cycle comes around, if there is great need and the chargeback app can identify that, um, how can we go ahead and forecast, you know, getting some of that operating operation expenses in? Is that do you find that that's an element as well um, that people are trying to do? Exactly. Yeah. So it, to understand what what we're what their usage is, what usage they have currently, where they're heading to, and then finally, we got to have accountability. Without chargeback, I don't think it would be very successful. It's important to have chargeback. So that's we want it to be uh, implemented, but maybe a last step in the process, right? But it's a healthy thing to have it. It's important to have it so other or uh, other business units in your organization would participate in the cost so we can maintain it and and um, keep the platform available for the users so they can enjoy using more of Splunk Cloud. Yeah, chargeback has been implemental and critical in our developments, uh, especially as you know people are in cost cutting times during the economy today, and so as we've been looking to see the value within our Splunk platform. Chargeback has really allowed us to do that as we've been able to see all these different lines of business that Splunk is directly impacting with the visibility it provides. Uh, so with that, we, you know, we use Showback critically. We learned what we were looking at. We learned who was using our Splunk platform, especially as we move to the workload pricing model. Um, and so moving to that, we had less visibility and Showback gave that to us. And then using that, we were able to forecast usage and predict to charge back within our uh, various business units. And so uh, with that being the case, we've increased accountability on all fronts. We've optimized uh, throughout our platform, uh, whether it's on user basis, a business unit basis, use case, whatever it may be. It's allowed for critical developments for us to increase capacity for more application teams, more lines of business, whatever it may be. Uh, to use our Splunk platform. Chargeback has always been one of our most requested ideas. I think it's been one of our top voted SVC related ideas on ideas on .splunk.com. So we're very excited to put this in the hands of like all the folks who are watching this video. This concludes the first video of this series. Video two, which will talk about building that hierarchy that you saw today 